So let's talk about how console works with Kubernetes. Um, and to start, let's see how console runs in Kubernetes. So the, the major components of Kubernetes are the nodes. There's multiple nodes within Kubernetes, and these are usually mapped to sort of VMs or physical machines or so on. Um, within the nodes, there's a number of pods. Pods could be multiple containers, but they're running isolated within each node. And then all the nodes put together collectively sort of form what is generally viewed as a single Kubernetes cluster within a single sort of region or data center um, availability zone, so on. And so this is the standard sort of Kubernetes layout. And the way we deploy console in Kubernetes is we use what's called a stateful set for the console servers because the console servers have state associated with them. They have to store data, back up that data, persist the data. And so we run a multi-node stateful set to run the console servers. So let's say we run three of those so that they could perform leader election. We make sure that they run on separate physical nodes so that if one node is wiped out, you can still perform the leader election. You don't get stuck with all three running on a single node. And then with the server setup, we also we then run all the agents on every single node as well. So let's add some more nodes in here. And every single node is going to run an agent. And let's just keep coloring those. So every node runs an agent, and three nodes in particular will run a server as well. And the agent is a really important part of console. The agent does a lot of caching, does a lot of permissions-based things, does a lot of health checking. It forms an important sort of backbone of the console cluster. And so it's important that you have an agent on every node, but we do keep in line with the normal Kubernetes data model where we run them directly in a pod. So you don't need to install anything special on the Kubernetes node. You just deploy it like any other Kubernetes application. And this means that you could deploy console sort of in any hosted environment. You don't need direct access to the, the VM underneath or any of that. You could run console anywhere. The other benefit of having the console on every host is that we expose the API directly onto the node. And so when any pod on that node wants to talk to the agent, it uses the host IP to talk directly to that local agent. That's where you get some of that performance. Uh, benefits, and that's also how you sort of simplify how do you find console. You don't need to use Kubernetes service discovery um, to find console. It's always sort of the local, local node and talking directly to the agent, and the agent itself knows how to talk to uh, the console servers. Console also has a lot of networking requirements. Every single agent has to be able to communicate to each other, but luckily we just use the standard Kubernetes networking model that's required by every Kubernetes cluster to make this work across any uh, any Kube cluster. So all the pods just connect directly to each other to form their sort of gossip protocols. And the Kubernetes network, networking model requires that all pods within a single cluster are routable. Uh, so this works no matter sort of what overlays and underlays you're, you're using with Kubernetes. And so with all this here, the biggest takeaway is that consoles deployed onto Kubernetes like any other application on Kubernetes. We don't do anything weird or special or unique. We're using the primitives that Kubernetes gives to us in order to make this possible. So once you have console running on Kubernetes, one of the biggest benefits you get from that is being able to do service discovery, service configuration, and service segmentation across other clusters, both Kubernetes and non-Kubernetes. So it's very common for large companies to have multiple Kubernetes clusters, which let's just represent by another large box. Um, and it's also very common that the company has non-Kubernetes workloads. So these just might be VMs running elsewhere, and we'll just make those little boxes. Or those could be bare metal servers or something else. It's usually you're migrating to Kubernetes or you're just maintaining different workloads. And so you just have these, this heterogeneous uh, workload set that's running across platforms. And Kubernetes itself sort of provides you with all these nice first class mechanisms like service discovery, configuration, and so on. But that doesn't translate well outside of the cluster. And those primitives aren't available in non Kubernetes environments. And so one of the benefits you get from console is getting those primitives available both anywhere, but also across anything. And so the most basic example is service discovery. How do you connect something that's not in Kubernetes to something else in Kubernetes? or two services that are in different Kubernetes clusters to each other? How do they find each other and how do they communicate? And so let's start with another Kubernetes cluster. If you have this Kubernetes cluster here, and let's say that it has uh, a pod running here, 
And this pod wants to talk to another pod over here. Maybe it's a web service to a billing service, or it's a database in one and uh, a backend in another. For some reason, these two pods want to communicate to each other. Finding another pod inside this Kubernetes cluster is very, very easy. Finding it across, you really have no tools to do that unless you use something like console. What console gives you is a unified service registry so that all the services that are happening uh, that are in, let, let's represent this box as, as console over here, even though console could run sort of anywhere. Console could be in this kube cluster, it could be outside, it could be anywhere. But if this is the console cluster, it's taking all the services from this kube cluster and sort of registering them here. It's taking all the services from here and keeping track. And then it's keeping uh, the services from this kube cluster also in a single registry. And so when this pod wants to talk to something over here, it could ask console, you know, where is that thing and how do I talk to it? And console is the one that responds with the correct IP address that could be routed to from here so that these two could talk directly to each other. Console sort of has the notion and understanding that if you're in the same data center, it'll return what's called a LAN IP, a locally routable sort of local network IP. And when you're talking across data center, it'll return a WAN IP, which is likely different in order to communicate across data centers. And that's how we view these two things. They're sort of geographically uh, separated, sort of logically, even if maybe they're in the same physical location. And then that's also the same for your bare metal machines or your VMs or so on. These themselves could just run the console agent as a process on the machine that participate in the same sort of catalog syncing over here so that when they need to talk to something in Kubernetes, they could do the same thing and talk directly in and vice versa. Things could talk directly down. And the best part about this is for Kubernetes, the way we expose this is by syncing directly to Kubernetes services. So other Kubernetes services can continue to use the same first class mechanisms and features that Kubernetes provides you, Kubernetes DNS, environment variables, et cetera. And so these don't know that there's another system helping make this possible. It just all feels native to the platform. And for the non-Kubernetes workloads, console uses console DNS, which is exposed as a local DNS that has all the uh, IPs of everything in the registry. And so in the same way, you're using what you would normally use, just base DNS that's configured to the local machine to find something that you don't need to care or realize is in a totally different platform or maybe a totally different sort of networking layout. Uh, console manages sort of how these connections happen for you. The other big benefit is start when you start looking into features like Connect, which are features, which is a feature that does mutual TLS uh, between any two services to ensure authentication and authorization of connections. It, it's what allows you to define a web server can talk to a database or cannot, and so on, and enable that to happen. Because Connect is based on end-to-end -end TLS, it sort of doesn't matter what's in the middle of anything as long as the whole connection is properly encrypted with the, the right TLS certificate. Console does this for you, and because we set up the right certificates across all these clusters, when, say, this, one, this service down here talks back into Kubernetes here, as long as this is sort of using the, the right certificate all the way through, this will just work. Console will be asked if these two services can talk to each other, console will say yes or no, and the connection will be established. This works through load balancers, across various cross data center tunnels, uh, pretty much any networking layout, as long as the two endpoints can communicate end to end to each other. And this is a huge benefit because you could get both local and global secure encrypted connections between any two services, and you could centrally manage with console what services could talk to each other, even though they're in totally different platforms. And the last place this really helps out is with workload migration. So let's say you're a company that's planning a migration to Kubernetes. You'd like to, in three to five years, be 99% Kubernetes, but the reality is today you're realistically less than 10%. Because everything is exposed from a discovery, connectivity, and security standpoint as a single interface through console, it doesn't really matter where those are, so it gives you a really nice migration story. You could slowly migrate sort of applications from your legacy environment into your new environment, and both sort of the developers and operators of those systems don't need to realize where they're, where they're currently running. It all sort of feels the same from a workflow, workflow perspective. Um, and that's, that's really the benefit console is giving you in these cross-cluster environments is uniformity.